Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Kate Seeley, Vice President of Programs and Communications here at MEI. Uh, and it's a real uh, treat and a pleasure to welcome Andrew Exum today for a talk about Afghanistan, the possibility of a new uh, Taliban insurgency in the spring, and uh, the ramifications for America's strategy there. His talk is especially timely coming on the eve of President Obama's State of the Union address tonight in which he's expected to talk about Afghanistan, uh, the role that the U.S. is playing there, and the fact that our in the administration's opinion, our retooled war strategy uh, is beginning to show results. Uh, there are seats in the front, if anybody would like to come to the front. Of course, uh, that is a question of uh, great uh, debate here in Washington policy circles. There are many who'd like to see us out as soon as possible, who believe that what we're doing there is a disaster, and others who believe that uh, the uh, call for a drawdown or the plan to start drawing down troops uh, this summer uh, will also have uh, very negative implications for um, uh, Afghanistan in the future. Um, although the administration has tried to put a fairly bright spin on the progress they've made there over the past year, the general security situation uh, has worsened significantly. The uh, International Red Cross held a conference in December, and they rarely speak publicly, uh, saying that uh, security had deteriorated in that country to the worst uh, situation, the worst point ever since the overthrow of the Taliban nine years ago. Uh, so the fact that the U.S. has decided to send now 1,400 Marines uh, in advance of the spring offensive to add to our combat troops there uh, just indicates how uh, significant uh, or how seriously the administration regards this next phase of the war on terror. And so we're very privileged to have Andrew here today because he brings a very unique uh, field experience to his insight into Afghanistan. He spent a lot of time on the ground there serving as a platoon leader um, uh, in 2002, 2003, uh, and also as a civilian advisor to uh, General Stanley McChrystal and to General Petraeus, uh, as well as an advisor to the CENTCOM assessment team. In fact, he's recently back from Afghanistan where he was doing uh, some consulting for the military as well as some work for the Center for New American Security where he's currently a fellow. Um, he's also the author of the book, This Man's Army, A Soldier's Story from the Front Lines uh, of the War on Terror. And he writes an amazing blog, Abu Mukawama, The Father of the Resistance. If anybody is not familiar with it, please uh, check it out. It's on the CNAS website, correct? Um, he also wears a Lebanon hat, which is uh, why uh, we're especially connected, because I spent years in Lebanon. He was at AUB doing his master's, and so if anybody's interested in trying to understand the madness in Lebanon, uh, we can chat with him afterwards for a few uh, minutes. So thank you, Andrew, for joining us. It's a great honor. Before we begin, though, just um, some uh, housekeeping. We've got a talk on Thursday, February 10th. Uh, looking at U.S.-Libyan relations uh, in the wake of the WikiLeaks controversy. Uh, I don't know how many of uh, you are aware, but uh, after the WikiLeaks, some WikiLeaks came out, the Libyans got very upset and withdrew or kicked out our ambassador uh, in Tripoli. So it'll be a very interesting discussion about what's happening on the ground there with David Mack, one of our scholars and a former Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for Near East Affairs, and he will be joined by Charles Dietrich, the executive director of the U.S.-Libya Business Association. So I hope you can join us on the 10th. Um, now please join me in welcoming Andrew Exum to talk about Afghanistan. Thank you. If you'd uh, I moved to Washington about two years ago, and if you told me that I would be invited to give a talk at the uh, Middle East Institute, I would have been uh, very honored, as indeed I am, um, if you told me that talk would be on Afghanistan instead of Lebanon, I would have been a little bit confused. Um, I left my second deployment uh, to Afghanistan in 2004 and moved to, uh, to Beirut, Lebanon, where I uh, indeed did my master's, and then I uh, did the field research for, uh, for my uh, doctoral dissertation there as well. I moved back here, in fact, in December of 2008 to work for H.R. McMaster on the, uh, 
on the CENTCOM assessment team as a Lebanon Syria guy, but both HR and I have been uh, have been drawn back to uh, to working on Afghanistan of late. Um, it's perhaps a little bit unfortunate that I'm not talking about Lebanon today. Uh, I woke up uh, pretty early this morning and uh, watched about three hours of, uh, of Al Jazeera before I went to work. And you kind of feel sorry for the correspondent who's reporting on his own truck getting burned up in Tripoli. Um, that's that's unfortunate. Um, but uh, but interesting times in uh, in Lebanon. I'd be happy to um, to speak about that. Um, with any of you after this, but uh, but again, when Kate and I were talking about what I would talk about, I said, "Well, I could talk on Lebanon, but I haven't been there since last uh, last fall." Whereas I, I'm in Afghanistan right now. Um, this was last month, and um, and so I might as well speak on Afghanistan. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to first off talk about where we've and you know shaping things around the State of the Union address uh, tonight. I'm going to talk about where we've come uh, over the past. Uh, 24 months since President Obama took office. Uh, where I think we're going to go uh, over the next two years until the next presidential election with a specific emphasis on the next 12 months. And I'm, I'm going to give you what I hope will be a few things to look for to gauge whether or not the administration's strategy and our operations in Afghanistan are succeeding or having the strategic effects that we, uh, we, uh, we hope they would. First, let me go back and uh, and talk about why I moved um, to uh, to Lebanon right after uh, leaving the army, which is that uh, Afghanistan, for in large part, was the war that we had won, and in, uh, in two thousand uh, by two thousand four, Iraq was the uh, the war that we um, we were just beginning to uh, to fight, and I remember sitting there watching the predator feeds of my platoon sergeant from Bagram Air Base in the spring of 2004, looking at the scenes, uh, I guess it was April of 2004, from Fallujah and from, uh, from southern Iraq, and thinking, uh, you know, my goodness, what has happened? We were just there, you know, three, four months ago, driving through Fallujah and not having any, uh, any problems, and now um, it looks like we're in a pitched battle uh, for, the, uh, for the streets of Fallujah. It seemed a safe bet that if one wanted to make oneself relevant, uh, in the field of uh, you know national security or for one's country, that one should study uh, study Arabic and spend a lot of time in the uh, in the Arabic speaking world, and that's that's uh, that's what I did. Um, but uh, when I've completed um, some work on the CENTCOM assessment team, uh, Vikram Singh had just left CNAS to go work um, on Ambassador Holbrook's staff, and Nate and John called me back over to uh, to CNAS to. Um, uh, two friends of mine, Nate Fick and John Noggle, to work uh, on Afghanistan for uh, CNAS. This corresponded with a new presidential administration. Um, when President Obama first took charge, or rather before he took charge, before the election, both campaigns had actually been given a pretty clear warning from the Bush administration, which was, uh, look, uh, Iraq is going a lot better than you might have thought uh, 12 months ago, but Afghanistan has gotten significantly worse. And you're not going to have the time when you come to office, whoever gets elected, to really think about what you're going to need to do in Afghanistan. You're going to have to commit more resources very quickly because we simply don't have, uh, have the time to, uh, to, to consider um, the, uh, the, uh, the short order effects. Um, President Obama... Um, perhaps thankfully, did not immediately do that. He first conducted uh, a review of our policy and strategy for uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan, and that culminated in the uh, March of 2009 white paper, which kind of articulated President Obama's policy aim with respect to Afghanistan, which is almost uniquely uh, or uniformly associated um, with al-Qaeda and denying al-Qaeda uh, safe havens in Afghanistan and Pakistan, and then a series of strategic goals which were actually pretty ambitious. 